Ever wondered what vitamin B12 deficiency can do to your body? Let's start at the beginning. Vitamin B12, also known as cobalamin, plays an essential role in the body. It's a key player in the production of DNA and red blood cells, and it supports the normal functioning of the nervous system. The absorption of B12 is a process that begins in the stomach where it binds with a protein called intrinsic factor, secreted by gastric parietal cells. From there, it's absorbed in the terminal ileum, the final section of the small intestine. Interestingly, our bodies are pretty efficient when it comes to B12 storage. We can store enough of this vitamin to last us three to four years. However, despite this efficiency, deficiency can still occur, leading to a host of health issues. Now that we know what vitamin B12 is and its significance, let's delve into how its deficiency can occur. So, how does one become deficient in vitamin B12? There are several ways this can happen, and one of the most common is through dietary limitations. For instance, strict veganism can lead to a deficiency, as vitamin B12 is found naturally in animal products. This is also a concern for vegetarians during pregnancy. Then, there are gastric issues that can lead to a deficiency. Mucosal atrophy, gastritis, autoimmune conditions, and post-gastrectomy conditions can all interfere with the body's ability to absorb vitamin B12. Intestinal absorption problems can also lead to deficiency. These could be due to conditions like Crohn's disease, celiac sprue, pancreatic insufficiency, or stagnant bowel conditions. Even certain medications in the presence of a fish tapeworm can interfere with absorption. Genetic factors also come into play. For example, pernicious anemia, a condition where autoantibodies are produced against gastric parietal cells, leading to a lack of intrinsic factor secretion. This intrinsic factor is vital to stabilize vitamin B12 as it passes through the bowel. A decrease in intrinsic factor leads to decreased ileal absorption of B12. Understanding these causes is crucial because vitamin B12 deficiency can have serious health implications. The body's total B12 stores are only sufficient for three to four years, so regular intake is necessary to maintain healthy levels. Understanding the causes of deficiency can help us recognize its symptoms, let's explore them next. Recognizing the symptoms can help in early detection. What should we look out for? Now vitamin B12 deficiency can manifest in several ways, primarily affecting our nervous system. The most common neurological symptom is cerebral, which includes confusion, delirium, and even dementia. Thankfully, these conditions are reversible with appropriate B12 therapy. In rare cases, the deficiency can affect our cranial nerves leading to optic atrophy. Then we have cord symptoms which can result in irreversible damage like subacute combined degeneration. This condition affects our posterior columns, leading to decreased vibration sense, proprioception, and two-point discrimination. It also impacts our pyramidal tracts, causing spastic weakness and hyperactive reflexes. Lastly, there's peripheral neuropathy, where the deficiency affects our nerves, usually symmetrically. This is more prominent in lower limbs than upper limbs. The reversibility of this symptom is variable. Knowing the symptoms is half the battle. Next, we look at how vitamin B12 deficiency is diagnosed. How do medical professionals diagnose vitamin B12 deficiency? Well, it all starts with a thorough investigation. A complete blood count, CBC, and reticulocyte count are usually the first steps. These can reveal severe anemia, neutropenia, and thrombocytopenia. A serum B12 and red blood cell RBC folate test can also be conducted. However, it's important to remember that a low serum B12 can lead to a low RBC folate. A blood film can further provide insight into the condition showing oval macrocytes and hypersegmented neutrophils. The bone marrow may also be examined, which could reveal hypercellularity and nuclear cytoplasmic asynchrony in RBC precursors. In addition, bilirubin and lactate dehydrogenase LDH levels may be elevated due to the breakdown of cells in the bone marrow. Finally, a Schilling test can be conducted to distinguish pernicious anemia from other causes by detecting anti-intrinsic factor antibody and anti-parietal cell antibody. Diagnosis is key to starting treatment. Let's look at how vitamin B12 deficiency is treated. Now that we've diagnosed the deficiency, how do we treat it? Well, vitamin B12 deficiency is typically treated with either injections or oral doses of the vitamin. Injections of 1,000 micrograms are usually given monthly for life, or a daily oral dose of 1,000 to 1,200 micrograms can be taken if intestinal absorption is intact. However, be aware of potential side effects like hypokalemia and rebound thrombocytosis when treating severe megaloblastic anemia. 
And that's how vitamin B12 deficiency is treated. Remember early detection is key, so if you suspect a deficiency, seek medical advice immediately.